This episode of The Central is presented by the Cochrane Firm of Jackson, the kings of trucking. Visit thekingoftrucking.com for more information. Hey, Jax. I'm Amari Walker. And I'm Sneha Biyuru. And this is JNN's The Central. The Central. On Saturday, November 12th, the American Heart Association held their annual 5K Heart Walk, which took place at the Mississippi Museum of Art in Jackson. The purpose of this walk is to raise funds for victims of heart disease and strokes. The walk also brings awareness and honor to survivors of those who are affected by heart issues. Over the weekend, the community was able to raise over $150,000. If you or someone you know has been affected by heart disease, you can learn more at www.heart.org. In national news, the United States held their midterm elections November 8th. The American citizens are watching closely for the results as there are big implications on the makeup of both legislative houses. The Democrats recently retained the majority in the Senate by winning key states like Nevada and Arizona. Republicans are poised to gain the majority in the House of Representatives with a narrow margin. Be sure to check in with the results over the next month as votes are counted. Now here's Annalise Kirk with your sports. Thanks, Neha. I'm Annalise Kirk, back with another sports update. Play for last week started on Tuesday, where multiple teams competed. Both your men's and Lady Jag basketball teams went out to McLaurin for their games, and they dominated, as both teams put up over 65 points and nearly doubled their opponent's scores. Also on Tuesday, your soccer Jags went over to West Lauderdale to compete. They showed out too, as your Lady Jags won by a 2-1 score, alongside your men's team cruising to a 7-1 victory. On Thursday, your men's and women's bowling team went out to Warren Central to play and they crushed it, with both teams sweeping their opponents. Also on Thursday, both the basketball teams hosted Vicksburg in the jungle. By a margin of five, the men's team narrowly lost. It was also a loss for the Lady Jags, falling by nine points. Towards the end of the week on Friday, your football team kicked off the playoffs as they went to South Panola for the first round and won 30 to 21. That game was exhilarating and you should check out the sports report that came out earlier this week for more in-depth coverage. On Monday, your bowling team started out the week, facing off against Northwest Rankin and coming back with mixed results. The Lady Jags continued their domination of the district by sweeping 6 to nothing, but the boys were swept 0 to 6. And the next day, your bowling team was back, as on Tuesday they went to compete in the Neshoba Central Tournament. Both teams play second in the tournament, showing out well. Also on Tuesday, your soccer jags look to extend this tear they've been on, hosting Terry in the jungle. Both teams had great games, as neither team gave up a point. On Thursday, both your soccer and basketball teams will be traveling for their games. Your basketball teams will go out to Yazoo to face Yazoo County, and your soccer team will go out to Starkville to face the Yellow Jackets. A thrilling playoff game awaits your football team on Friday, as they'll end off the week rematching against Tupelo for the second round of the playoffs. That's all for this time. Make sure you check in with us next week for all your future updates and scores. And now, here's Kate with your weekly weather. Hey Jax, this is Kate Jasper with your weather. Wednesday we are seeing a high of 52 and a low of 29. Tomorrow the high will dip into the 40s with a high of 47 and a low of 28. We'll warm up slightly on Friday with a high of 53 and a low of 30. Prepare for the weekend with Saturday's high of 51 and a low of 28, along with Sunday's high of 49 and a low of 29. That's your weather, Jags. Back to you, Amari. Thanks, Kate. There's an abundance of people that work diligently to help MCHS function day to day. One group that often goes unnoticed is our lunch staff. JNN's Madeline Last reports on all they do for the school. The Madison Central cafeteria workers work hard to provide a nutritional lunch for the students every day. Their hard work and dedication does not go unnoticed by the student body. Madison Central's administration works hard to maintain a comfortable environment for the cafeteria workers. Our cafeteria staff has a great impact on Madison Central High School. They deliver a meal every day to us. Um, one of the foundations of a good day is, is to be able to eat. In order to have a, an efficient um, cafeteria system, you got to have a great staff to start, and we do have that. You also got to have great processes in place, uh, very organized processes, so that we can have an efficient and orderly cafeteria. Students can absolutely show their appreciation for our school lunch staff by following the processes that are in place, get in the line orderly, be prepared at uh, the cashier. Administration tries to create a positive uh, work environment with our cafeteria work staff just by first relationships. Um, and we work together on a daily basis to solve the problems uh, in our building, most specifically in the cafeteria. And we do want to support uh, what they want and what they need for us, and we try to follow through when we can. 
The cafeteria workers spend many hours preparing a variety of lunches for students. I've been working at Madison Central for six years and my role is child nutrition manager. The Pacific guideline is to make sure we meet the USDA requirements. So and that's to make sure we check all the temps, serve the correct amount of portions and make sure the food is hot and ready. We feed somewhere between 380 to 400 students a day. It's like always on the go because every morning I'm trying to get here early to turn on the um, stoves because we do breakfast. We just start back doing hot breakfast so it had to be out there at 745. Mass and Central's cafeteria staff are dedicated to making enjoyable lunches for the students. Next time you go through the cafeteria line, make sure you tell them how much you appreciate them. This has been Madeline Lass with JNN. Thanks, Madeline. Jackson is full of diverse businesses and business owners. JNN's Kate Kaiser describes how black owned businesses, Marshalls and Offbeat, provide a hospitable and creative atmosphere. Jackson is home to crafty black owned businesses. Marshalls and Offbeat are two music stores that give the community a safe space to express one's creativity. For eight years, Offbeat has offered young minorities a place to pursue becoming an upcoming musician, poet, or comedian. They also sell a wide variety of records to the public. I mean, I get to like set my own hours. I get to do what I, one of the many things that I love, which I get to help recommend like records and comic books to people and children and stuff like that. And, you know, provide like a space that you don't see this stuff in like the normal store. You don't see this stuff in like Walmart or Target or anywhere like that. And so to be a black owned business in a city that's predominantly black is very special because growing up, there were comic book shops in Jackson, but they weren't black owned. And I was always going to record stores, comic book stores, but very rarely did I run across some that were black owned. So I think it was important, you know, for, for a demographic that's 80% plus in Jackson that I, you know, would represent the city. Marshall's is the oldest operating Black-owned bookstore on Ferris Street. The walls are covered in handwritten captions and photocopied pictures of Pan-African pioneers, civil rights activists, and Black entertainers. Marshall's offers Christian books, sheet music, and custom choir robes. Our regular customers expect a lot of attention and good conversation. And, and we love to do that. Whatever I'm doing, I drop it and I just pay attention to them and we talk about whatever they want to talk about. We talk about grandbabies to politics. <laughs> it definitely is about community. Marshall's Music and Bookstore is not just a retail uh, outlet. We also help our community. We're very much committed to the uplift of our community, so we do a lot of work in the community, uh, donating funds, donating time. We uh, do movable schools, all sort of things. We also work with people who have been wrongfully convicted or or falsely arrested, and we work with uh, freeing them and exonerating their cases. The next time you're in Jackson, don't be afraid to explore and support its black-owned businesses. To learn more about Offbeat, you can visit offbeat.jxn.com. This has been Kate Kaiser with JNN. Thanks, Kate. Madison Central offers many different clubs and activities for students. JNN's Rachel Carpenter reports on how the students benefit from the Government Club and the Youth Legislature event. The Government Club at Madison Central gives students interested in political matters an opportunity to interact with the legislative process. The Government Club offers Youth Legislature a fun trip to Mississippi's capital for students to collaborate and vote on student-made bills. Youth Legislature is a mock Mississippi legislature where students from across the state can come together and act as representatives or senators and pass mock bills and try to make them law. It's a lot of kids from all over Mississippi, right? So maybe kids that don't grow up in places like Madison County where government isn't, you know, as big as a, like a deal there as it might be here. So they get to come and be exposed to these like pressing political matters that are important to, you know, the kids that go and all of us there. And just that exposure to that, it's like, wow, this is real. Like this, these are things that I need to be concerned about as like a young adult. So from writing bills to debating them at school for practice to actually learning the Mississippi code and law, it allows high school students to research what it means to be a Mississippi legislator and a citizen. So researching codes, researching punishments for crimes and stuff like that, it allows students to see what it means to debate and act upon the citizens of Mississippi. 
It's important for Madison Central to offer clubs like the Government Club to allow students to engage in political matters in school. I think it's very important for students to be involved in political matters. We have one of the most diverse, engaged, intelligent generations that this country has ever seen. We need to make sure that our voices are heard within all levels of government. We held a mock midterm election earlier. We helped did a um, voter registration drive. And it's just, it's important, you know, these things matter. If students have an interest in politics and want to be involved in these clubs, they can visit mcjags.com student life page. This has been Rachel Carpenter with JNN. Thanks, Rachel. Jane and senior spotlights highlight well-rounded athletes. Casey Pierce embodies Jag spirit with her record of accomplishments. Jane and Kyra Davis reports on her leadership and dedication to the Mystic Dance Team and Beverly Show Choir. Casey Pierce always gives show-stopping performances. Whether it's on the stage, on the sidelines, or during pep rallies, she has never been one to disappoint. Casey has been a part of the different Jaguar dance teams since middle school. She finally became a Mystic's co-captain her senior year. Being a co-captain so far has been both exciting and a challenge. It's been exciting watching other people on the dance team who I've been on the team with for five years or some that I've just been on it for a couple of years lead the team as well as me leading the team and it kind of makes you proud of like how far we've come and then it's exciting because you actually get to get in there and like create something on people. We've never done that before. Dance, there's like nothing like it and I say I don't really know how to put that into words except it's just you get on the stage or you get on the football field and everything makes sense when you're up there in a way. It's kind of like showing everybody who you actually are because like my full personality comes out when I dance. Since Casey first made the team her sophomore year, she's grown exponentially. Um, they were the, the only team to have virtual trials. So just in terms of kind of coming out of her shell and everything, she's grown a lot in that way. Casey has several qualities that make her wonderful at leading the team. Um, First of all, the team loves her. She's an amazing dancer, so everybody kind of looks up to her as the standard that they want to be at as far as dancing goes. Um, and then because she's such a wonderful dancer and because they respect her, they, they want to do what she says. They want to, um, you know, again, be at that level where she is, and all the seniors have been that way. Whenever you watch Casey dance, you can, you can feel how much she loves dancing, how much she loves performing. It's impossible to watch her at a pep rally or on the sidelines and not want to dance with her. I think Casey has definitely improved the dance team as a senior. She's always been one of those people that doesn't take anything but perfect as an answer. You know, she's always pushing us to be better. She knows how to positively encourage us to be the best type of dancer that we can be. And I don't think we'd be the same team without her. In addition to Casey being on the dance team, she is also a member of show choir. My schedule for balancing being a co-captain on dance team and being in show choir is pretty much split. Show choir has developed me into a better performer because it was a new challenge and it made it really exciting to like get in there. Dancing out on stage feels more electric just because that is like my safe space. I love the stage and I always have since I was really little. For Casey, she started doing show choir last year. That was her first year doing it. And she's just always been, always been such a joy to have in show choir. Like, she comes ready, she comes ready to help people, just like brings like a really bright energy into the group. Casey will attend Ole Miss for higher education. She has been attending the Rebelette program provided by their dance team. I went my freshman year and then I kind of started going back to them this year just because you don't want to regret anything. So we'll see if it happens, but if it doesn't, I'm planning on it majoring in education. So I'm hopeful that I can coach a dance team like the Mystics one day. Casey sets an example of where hard work and dedication can get you. Make sure you keep an eye out for her during pep rallies or on stage to watch her steal the show. This has been Kyra Davis with JNN. Well, that's all for this time, Jags. Be sure to check out our Instagram at Jaguar News Network and our Twitter at Jaguar News Net for more updates throughout the week. Until next time, I'm Seha Biyuru. And I'm Amari Walker. And this has been JNN's The Central. Central.